as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns present Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike and the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. There's no one that can make a better cereal than Quaker puffed wheat. It's neat. And when you hear the shooting, you're darn tootin' that Quaker makes the ones shot from guns. Listen, fellas and girls, make every day start out like a red-letter day. Treat yourself at breakfast to the swellest-tasting cereal you ever had. Delicious, crisp, Quaker-popped wheat or Quaker-popped rice. Jean Lafont, a young, happy-go-lucky French-Canadian, was in an unusually good mood as he entered the cabin where his wife Marie and his eight-year-old girl Nanette were setting the table for supper. Bonsoir, my pretty one. Jean, at last you have come home. Oh, you have been gone two days. Papa, I have been waiting for you. So, my little Nanette, miss her papa when he go to follow his trap line, huh? Oui, papa. But the news I bring is worth waiting for. I have put many fine fur in this storage shed. Oh. Fur such as I have never found before. Oh, Jean, that is good news. <laughs> Ma chérie, you are married to one very wise fellow. When we come to the Yukon and find all the good claims taken, did I despair, huh? No, I think to myself, people pay much gold for fur. So I become the trapper. <laughs> I agree you are wise, Jean. But it is not for you to say so. So? And what does my little one say, huh? I think you're the wisest papa in the world. <laughs> May we, oui, you are right. And when I go to sell my fur tomorrow, ma petite, I shall bring something for you. Oh, I want a doll, papa. Please, a doll. <laughs> we shall see. But come, I am most hungry, so let us eat this supper before it is cold. Tomorrow, I shall trade my fur for more gold than I could have dug all the winter. The next morning, Jean went to Selkirk with a sled loaded with furs. At the trading post, he was enthusiastic as he spread one skin after another on the counter. Look, Mike, such a pelt as this one is not often seen around here, eh? And this white fox, is it not a beauty? Sure. Sacre bleu, you are lucky that I bring them here to sell. Mike, <laughs> this... No, no, take it easy, but Jean. Look <laughs> at this children from the way you carry on. You'll be having me believe I am lucky to have you sell them to me. <laughs> ah, so... These men who spend their time by your warm stove think it is not difficult to trap such fine skinned, eh? But they will think otherwise when they see all the gold you pay me for them. How much you give, eh? Well, it'll take a little time for me to figure what they're worth, John. So don't rush me. Of course not, Mike. You take two, maybe three minutes. I don't mind. I look around this store. <laughs> Go along with you, John. You're sure a cad. <laughs> hey, so much you have here. Yet nothing to buy for my little Nanette. She will be most disappointed if I do not... Oh, but wait. Voila, that is it. That rag doll. So Nanette will not be disappointed after all. This I shall buy first. Well, that's the only doll I have in the place, too. Change much. Man, we, she will think it is beautiful. Now, Mike, how much do I get for my fine fur, eh? Well, I figure about 2,000. I got to admit, you have some rare pelts here, Jean. 2,000! <laughs> I accept, but 
You must throw in the doll for good measure, Mike. <laughs> you should drive a hard bargain, but it's a deal. <laughs> you want it in cash or gold? Gold, monsieur. It will be the first Yukon gold I have had in my hands. Wear the gold, Mike. Wrap up the doll. Then I shall be on my way. All right. <laughs> After receiving a poke full of gold, Jean left the general store smiling happily and carrying the rag doll under his arm. Hey, Jean! Hello! Where are you heading for? Oh, good morning, Frank. I am going back to my cabin. Well, how come you came to town so early? You're heading back so soon. I have sold my fur. See, in this poke there is gold. Two thousand dollar worth. See, now, that's fine. That's fine. Glad you made out with your trapping, John. But you shouldn't carry that gold around with you. You ought to put it in the bank for safekeeping. Oh, I want Marie and Nanette to see the gold. Then I am going to use it to buy the claim beyond my cabin. The owner is sick and want to go back home. He's willing to sell cheap. Now listen, Jean. Let me give you some advice. That's a good claim. You'll make no mistake buying it. But as for carrying the gold back home with you, that's risky. Oh. Now you go to the bank. Keep about $50 worth of gold to show with Marie and Nanette. Then change the rest into $100 bills. They'll be easy to carry and easy to hide until you get ready to close the deal. You are right, mon ami. I did not think of the risk. I shall not go to talk about the claim until tomorrow. I'll do what you advise, merci beaucoup. Well, come on. I'll go to the bank with you. And we'll stop at my place for coffee. Ah, très bien. Mush! Mush there! Later that morning, Mike, the owner of the general store, sat at a table in the cafe with a constable having coffee. Mike was saying... <sighs> Jean Lafont came to the store this morning with a load of furs. <laughs> sure, he was happy as a lark over the prospects of getting his hands on some gold. <laughs> mm, Jean's had a tough time here in the Yukon, but he always manages to keep smiling. I'm glad he succeeded in getting some pelts. Oh, uh, he succeeded all right, Constable. Finer skins anyone ever brought in. Added up to two thousand dollars worth. That's fine. <laughs> Jean insisted I pay him with gold. Said it'd be the first Yukon gold he'd have in his hands. <laughs> And his first thought was to get something for his little girl, Nanette. Took her a rag doll as a present. Good. <laughs> T'was a sight to behold to see that young Frenchman strutting out with his gold and that rag doll tucked under his arm. <laughs> he was as happy as a millionaire. <laughs> I wish more men around here were as ambitious and as, as easily pleased as Jean. So many of them expected to find gold in large quantities. They were disappointed when they didn't and now refused to work for just enough to keep them. Down and out drifters in the Yukon will soon be a big problem. Uh -huh. I have men every day begging for credit so as to get supplies. But they don't have any means of getting the money to pay. Jean Lafont will never be that kind. I'm sure he won't. Well, I have work to do. I'll walk as far as your office with you, Constable. A few minutes later, a man who had overheard the conversation between Mike and the Constable left the cafe and went to a room at the hotel. Hi, Ralph. Waited the cafe for me to join you. I overheard something I want to tell you about. What? The storekeeper was telling the constable about a young Frenchman named Jean Lafont, who got two thousand in gold for some furs he brought in this morning. What's on your mind, Sam? Getting that gold, of course. We're down to a few dollars between us. What makes you think we could get the gold? From what I heard, the young Frenchman asked for gold in payment. That means he likely took it home with him. Well? Well, we could find out about him, where he lives, and all that. And maybe we could uh, manage to go out there tonight and get that gold. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we could. But asking a lot of questions will throw suspicion on us after we took the gold. Leave it to me. I'll get the information we want. I'll meet you at the cafe later, Ralph. A short time later, Sam entered the general store. He walked to the end of the counter and stood near the bundle of furs until Mike came to wait on him. Uh, what can I do for you, mister? Give me a plug of tobacco, eh? Uh, sure thing. Yeah. That's 25 cents. There you are. Hmm, bundle of fine furs you have here. Somebody must have brought them down from farther north, huh? Nope, a young trapper who has a place on Wolf Creek brought him in. You don't say so. I didn't think skins like those could be caught around here. Are there many trappers in this territory? Nope. Young LaFont's about the only one, I reckon. Everybody else is out for gold. <laughs> I'd rather stick the pan in gold myself. Following the trap line's a tough job. 
Well, I'll be seeing you again. So long. Hey, come in again, mister. Sam joined Ralph at the cafe and told him what he had learned. Ralph remarked, well, There might be a lot of cabins on Wolf Creek, Sam. How do we know which one is the Frenchman? I've been up that way. I know there's only two cabins there. We won't have any trouble locating him. Good. As soon as it gets dark, we'll head for Wolf Creek and get that gold. Then we'll keep going. Let's go back to the hotel. Right. Come on. That evening, Sergeant Preston and his dog, King, arrived in Selkirk on routine patrol duty. At the general store, he heard about Jean Lafont's good fortune. Jean deserved to make good. I hope his good luck continues. Uh, sure, and he plans to buy a claim with the money he got for the first sergeant. I think he'd do better to stick to his trap lines. Buying a claim's all right, provided he gets a good one. I'd hate to see Jean get stuck like so many others up here. So would I. After I go over some reports for the constable, I'll go out to Jean's place and discuss the matter with him. I know most of the claims around here. I could advise him. I'm sure he'll listen to you, Sergeant. Oh, thanks, Mike. Well, I'll go to the constable's office now. See you later. Come along, King. <laughs> Darkness had fallen. Jean Lafont was busy in a drying shed behind his cabin, scraping a fresh pelt. But he heard a dog team stopping in front of his cabin. <laughs> Jean opened the shed door and called out. Hello there. If you have come to see Jean Lafont, I am back here. Yeah, I must be back there. The light from the lantern fell across the faces of Sam and Ralph as they stopped just outside the doorway. We came to talk business with you. We, of course. What is this business you mentioned? We'll tell you about that after we get in the cabin. But why can we not talk here in the shed? We want to get warm. Oh, there is a stove in here to dry out my skins. If you wish to step inside... Wait a minute, Frenchy. We said we want to go inside the cabin, not this shed. What is this? Why do you speak like that to me? If you don't want to talk here, then leave. I would not do business with you now anyway. Well, this gun says we're going into the cabin. <laughs> what is the meaning of this? We came to get the gold you have, Frenchy. We know you have it, so there's no use you trying to stall about it. I left it in town. I think you're lying. Sure he is. From what I heard the storekeeper say, he was anxious to bring it all home with him. We're going inside, Go. Frenchy. Go on, head for the cabin. You are making a big mistake, my friend. Go on, I move. In the cabin, Jean's wife, Marie, had heard the men stopping outside and had gone to the door. She heard Jean call them. Then she stood listening while they talked near the shed. When she realized why they had come, she hurriedly took the roll of paper money Jean had brought from the table drawer where he had placed it. Ah, they will be here any minute. I must hide it someplace else. Her eyes rested on the rag doll which Nanette had placed in a chair near the fireplace. Quickly, Marie picked up the doll, then ripped the back seam with scissors. There. Now I will stuff the roll of bills in the doll, then sit down and be sewing the seam when they come in. Marie quickly settled in the chair and, taking a needle and thread, started sewing the open seam of the rag doll just as the door opened. Marie... These men, they are not friends. They have come to steal from us. Oh, but we have nothing. We know you have. We know about your husband selling his furs and getting gold for it. And if you don't want your husband to get hurt, ma'am, you better tell us where he hid the gold. Oh, the gold. It is in the poke in the top drawer of the bureau over there. Watch him, Ralph. I'll see if she told the truth. Find it. There's a poke here, all right. I have it. You better check that doesn't look like it's worth 2000 Hey, you're right. I'd say there's far less than $100 worth in this poke. Where's the rest of that gold? Come on, speak up. That up. is all the gold I brought home. That is the truth. Jean is right. He did not bring the rest of the gold home. Before I left town, I stopped at the bank. Tell the truth. Oh, stop it. It is the truth. He did stop at the bank. Uh, looks like we're out of luck, Sam. Mama! Mama! Oh, quick. My little girl, she will be so frightened if she sees the guns. All right, we'll hold them in our pockets. But remember, you're still covered. We're not through yet. Mama, I want my doll. I... Oh, we have company. Yes, ma chérie, but you must not stay out of bed. I will bring you the doll. Wait a minute. Let her come and get her. Come get the doll, Nanette. Why do you have my doll, Mama? Oh, how did she get torn open like that in the back? It is all right, Nanette. Mama is sewing it for you. It will be as good as new again. But it is new. And it wasn't torn when I went to bed. I set it on the chair near the fireplace. 
And it was all right then, Mama. You take the doll, Nanette, and go back to bed. I will sew it in the morning. Here. Wait a minute. Let me see that doll. What's the idea, Sam? We haven't got all night. To... What's it, Ralph? Look here. The seam was cut open, and there's something stuffed into the rag doll. He's getting my doll all dirty with his hands. Your hands, monsieur. They are soiling the doll. Give it to me. Don't and move, I... lady. Look, Ralph. A roll of bills. A hundred dollar bills. Marie, how did this... John, I heard them out there. I knew they would try to make you tell where it was. I tried to hide it in the rag doll. <laughs> you both tried to trick us. We'll take this cash along with that small amount of gold. Here, youngster, take the doll. Now it's all dirty. You'll not get away with our money. We will get the police. We better time before we leave, Sam. Yeah. Papa, make them go away. Don't be frightened, little one. Don't be frightened. The child, you do not tie her. We'll lock her in the back room. She can't get out of there. Let's get busy, Ralph. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, you don't need a second invitation to breakfast when you have a big bowl full of delicious, crisp, Quaker popped rice or Quaker popped wheat waiting for you. They're a bell ringer for flavor, toasty nut-like, and puffed to crisp, tender perfection. And listen, <whistles> that's the warning whistle. This week is your last chance to hear about the sensational offer on this program. Don't miss out on the three-dimension pictures of a space flight to the moon. If you've ever wanted to step into a rocket ship and zoom into outer space, get every word at the end of the program. Keep listening. Now to continue. By the time Sam and Ralph left the cabin, a heavy snowstorm had started. About an hour later, Sergeant Preston and his dog, King, arrived at John's cabin. Well, King, how are you, Husky? Whoa, whoa. Come along, King. Help. Come on, King. Sorry, you. John, Marie, how'd this happen? While Sergeant Preston untied them and released Nanette, Jean and Marie told what had happened. When he heard the entire story, Preston asked, How long ago did they leave here? About one hour ago, Sergeant. Oui. We, they took all our gold and money. They were big and tough, both of them. They dirtied my dolly. The man with the dirty hands did it. It'll be all right, Nanette. Marie, it was clever of you to think of hiding the cash inside the rag doll, but it wouldn't have done any good. Those men would have forced you to tell. We, oui, you are right, Sergeant. It is no use. The big storm will cover their track and... They are gone with all we had. If the cook handled that rag doll, King may be able to get his scent from it. Oh, you think you might get back our money, Sergeant? I'll do my best, Marie. Nanette, would you let me take the doll? I'll see that you get another one. Yes, Sergeant. Here it is. See how dirty it is now? Yes, but this doll may help us get your dad's money back. Here, King. Oh, you are going after them if King gets the scent? That's right. Oh, but these storms, We're Sergeant. used to storms. Get the scent, King. <laughs> He has it. Shall I go with you, Sergeant? No, Jean. I'll make better time alone. Let's go, King. Find him, boy. <laughs> good night. I'll do my best to capture those crooks. Good night, Sergeant. And good luck. After them, King. Find him, boy. <laughs> All right. On, King. On. <laughs> Sam and Ralph pushed southward through the storm. Finally, they stopped at a deserted wayside cabin to get warm and rest the dogs. While Ralph started a fire in the pot-bellied stove, Sam counted the roll of bills he had taken from the rag doll. This is it, Ralph. Nineteen hundred and fifty dollars in the roll. <laughs> and with the gold in the poke, it adds up to about two thousand. We got the full amount we were after. Yeah, and it's handier to carry in paper bills. The storm seems to be getting worse, Ralph. We better hold up here for a while. It suits me. Nobody will go to the Frenchman's place in this storm. They may not be found for a day or two. Someone should happen to stop there, though. They'd notify the police. We might be fallen. Our tracks are covered, and we turned off the main trail about two miles back. Yes? Ah, we're safe enough. In spite of that, I think one of us ought to stay on guard. We can take turns sleeping. You turn in for a while if you want to. I'll keep a lookout, and if anyone comes along, I'll wake you. All right. I could do with some sleep. <laughs> 
Meantime, Sergeant Preston and King made good time in spite of the storm. On, King! On, your husband! When they reached the place where the crooks had turned from the main trail, King stopped. On, your husband! What's the trouble, King? Lose the scent, boy. The big husky slowly circled, searching for the scent. Then, where a branch trail, now hidden by the snow, turned to the left, the big dog stopped and barked. Good dog. Found the scent again. All right. Untang! Untang! The wind was blowing down trail from Preston and King toward the cabin in which the crooks had taken refuge from the storm. At the cabin, Sam went to the door and opened it to see if the storm was easy. Somebody coming. Ralph, wake up. What? What's the matter? Somebody's coming. I went to the door and heard dogs barking. Hey, maybe they're after us. Yeah, have your gun ready. A few minutes later, Sergeant Preston stopped his team a short distance from the cabin. In the cabin, Sam went to the table and sat down. Hey, what's the idea, Sam? Come here and sit down, quick. Keep your gun out of sight. I saw someone snooping at the back window. Yeah, but if he sees us sitting here like this... It'll throw him off guard. You don't realize we know he's out there. He's gone now, likely heading for the door. Now what do we do? Get up, quick. (laughs) You go stand behind the stove for protection and cover anyone who enters. I'll take up a position so I'll be behind the door when it opens. Hurry and have your gun ready. Right. Sam and Ralph waited with drawn guns inside the cabin. Suddenly, the door was flung open. Reach! Don't move! You reach, Red Coat. I'm right behind you. Drop your gun! That dog in the doorway. Order him out or I'll plug him. Back, King. Back, boy. Close the door. Leave him outside. Close it! Watch out, King. Now drop your gun like I said. Sergeant Preston hesitated a moment. He realized he was trapped. Once without his gun would be wholly at the mercy of the two crooks. But something sudden and unexpected momentarily distracted the two gunmen's attention. Ralph, look out! The dog came through the window behind you! No! King leaped upon Ralph, grabbing his gun off. All right! Preston, taking advantage of the distracting situation, turned quickly and swung with his fist, catching Sam on the chin. Sam fell and was knocked out for the moment. Preston kicked the crook's gun into a corner and quickly went over to Ralph and King. Help! Help! Get him off! Stop him! I have your gun. Down, King. Down, boy. Watch him. Uh, you tricked us, you and that mutt. Get up. Come over here with your partner. That dog had not crashed through the window. But he did. Guard, King, while I handcuff him. After handcuffing both crooks, Preston found the cash and the small poke of gold in their pockets. This is what I need for evidence. I arrest both of you in the name of the Crown for armed robbery. Now I'll take you to the Selkirk jail. All right, get moving. All right. Preston took Sam and Ralph directly to town, where they were put behind bars. The next morning, Preston and Mike, the storekeeper, made a special trip to LaFont Cabin. Hulking! Hoyo! Run a hole! Sergeant Preston and Mike. We brought something for all of you, Marie. Oh, come right in. You two kids. Sergeant, did you catch the crook? Yes, John. Here's your cash and your poke of gold. Oh, you see, Sergeant. This is wonderful. Sergeant, did you bring back the doll? Even if it is dirty, it's the only one I ever had. Mike has that big box for you, Nanette. Open it. Here you are, Nanette, darling. <laughs> Wait till you see what the sergeant bought for you. Oh, merci. I'll open it right away. Oh, mama, papa, ah. look. Oh, Nanette, a real doll with golden hair. And the beautiful clothes, Nanette. That is a beauty. But, Mike, yesterday you told me you had no other but the right doll. Uh, sure, and I forgot about this one. It was so fancy, I didn't expect to sell it, so I had it packed away. Papa, I like the red doll you brought me, too. <laughs> You'll still have that one, Nanette. I have it here in my pocket. Sir Jean, it's clean, and someone sewed it up. Sure, and the missus washed it and sewed the seam. <laughs> it is almost as good as new. My two dolls will play together now. Oh, I love them both so much. Of course you do, dear. I, uh, came out here last night, John... Because I heard you planned to buy a claim with your money. Now, uh, why don't you bank the cash until we have a chance to talk it over and make sure you get a good claim? All right, Sergeant. I'll take the cash to the bank this morning. Good. 
We are lucky to have such a good friend there, Nanette. We have our cash and gold back, and now you have two dolls to keep you company. Oh, we have much to be thankful for. I'm glad to see you all happy again. The rag doll played its part in helping to capture these cooks. This case is closed. Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Hurry, fellas and girls. Get in on the excitement of a space flight to the moon. This is the last week of this amazing radio offer. Listen to every word. Hear how to get eight thrilling three-dimension pictures of a space flight to the moon. They come right on packages of delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. No waiting, nothing to send in. Imagine yourself stepping into a rocket ship and heading for the moon. The first three-dimension picture you get on the back of Quaker puffed rice and wheat packages is Spaceport. That's where your huge rocket ship takes off from Earth. Number two is Rocket Ship Away. Number three, stop over at Space Island, where you refuel. Number four, passing a space liner. Number five, wing repair in outer space. Your rocket ship has been struck by a meteor. Number six, target the moon. Number seven, landing on the moon. Number eight, you're exploring the moon, armed with ray guns. Just think of the fun you'll have collecting all eight of these exciting three-dimension pictures that take you on a space flight to the moon. They're real 3D. No glasses needed. The pictures actually stand out from the background. And each 3D picture in full color comes only on a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Ready to cut out, easy to put together. And you get a complete story about each picture. What's more, these terrific 3D pictures don't cost you a red cent. They're free of extra cost with a purchase of a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Nothing to send in, no waiting. But hurry, the limited supply won't last forever the way fellas and girls are rushing to get them. So hustle over to your grocers. Ask for swell-tasting Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat with a Space Flight to the Moon 3D Pictures on the back. Collect all eight 3D pictures. Trade with your friends. And now, here is Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston reporting for duty, Inspector. Sergeant, Mike Paris, the owner of the Lucky Monday Mine, is planning to ship $100,000 to Dawson. Constable Baker and I will pass the Lucky Monday on our way back to Dawson, Inspector. I told Mike to delay the shipment until you two reach the mine. Very well, sir. Sergeant Preston doesn't suspect that he and Constable Baker will meet an unexpected ambush when they reach the Lucky Monday Mine. Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These radio dramas, a feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon is brought to you every Tuesday and Thursday at this same time by Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.